Too late. No time. No. Those were the last words heard on the cockpit voice recorder of the French supersonic jet, the Concorde, that crashed in Paris on July the 25th, 2000, killing 109 people on board and four on the ground. As the jet was leaving the airport, it hit a piece of metal on the runway, which blew the tire apart. A piece of the tire punctured the fuel tank, causing an explosive fire that brought the jet down 90 seconds into its flight. When the pilot was made aware of the emergency situation, he responded by saying that he would make an attempt to land at a nearby airport. However, just a few seconds later, he said, too late, no time, no. And then there was silence. 113 people were plunged into eternity. For all those on board and those few on the ground, it was too late. There was no time left. You know, the same sort of freak accident could happen to any one of us to end our lives here on Earth. It may not be an airplane crash. It could be a head-on automobile collision. It could be a heart attack. It could be a stroke. It could be a slip in the bathtub. It could be choking on food. Literally thousands of things could happen to end our lives here on Earth. And for that reason, it's incumbent upon us to think soberly and seriously about what the Bible teaches about life and about the fact that this life is a time of preparation. We're using to this time, we're to use this time to prepare for eternity. Let's think about that for just a few moments. First of all, the Bible has something to say about the uncertainty of life. I can't put my finger on the calendar on tomorrow's date and say I know for a fact that I'm going to be able to carry out my plans tomorrow because I don't. I may not be here tomorrow. The wise man said in Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 1, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. The Bible teaches about the brevity of life, the shortness of life, and it's short even at its longest when you think of it in terms of eternity. James asked the question in James chapter 4 and verse 14, For what is your life? And then he answers, it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. We've seen a pot of boiling water on the stove and we, we can fix our eyes on a focal point on that steam and see it rising into the air and after a few seconds it vanishes. We can't see it anymore. James says that's what life is like. The Bible teaches that death is certain. It's an appointment that all have to meet. We read in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this come a judgment. And death may come suddenly. It may come unexpectedly. It may come in the midst of making plans for the future. Death comes to the old. It comes to the young. It comes to the middle-aged. We read of the rich farmer in Luke chapter 12 in the parable of the rich farmer. And we read that the ground of this man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, what shall I do? I'll tear down my barns and build greater barns, and there I'll have room to bestow all of my goods and all of my fruits. And I'll say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. While that man was thinking of his life in terms of years, what he was going to do for years to come. But in reality, he didn't have another day. God said to him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be which thou hast provided for thyself? The Lord taught that one soul is worth more than the entire world, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26. And it's for that reason that Jesus came and sacrificed his life on the cross, giving us an opportunity to respond to his sacrifice and to become New Testament Christians and to obtain the forgiveness of sins and prepare for eternity. Jesus died on the cross so that we could have the opportunity to be saved. And so the Bible has something to say about the urgency of preparing for eternity. Today is the day of salvation, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. We need to make plans for eternity. We need to prepare. 
And there's so many different lessons in the scriptures that teach about the responsibility of making the necessary preparation. We read of the parable of the of the uh, of the foolish virgins in Matthew chapter 25. You read of the wise virgins and the foolish virgins, and the foolish virgins thought that they would be able to go into the marriage feast based upon the preparation that someone else had made, the wise virgins, but they were not able to enter in. The Bible says that the door was shut, the door of opportunity. And so we need to make sure that we spend time preparing for eternity. In the words of the prophet, in Amos chapter 4 and verse 12, prepare to meet thy God.